In today's video, I'm talking about the top five books that I read in 2019. So let's get right into it. What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Find Your Flow channel. And today I'm talking about my favorite five books from 2019. Now this is always a tough choice for me because I read a lot of books and I'm very judicious on which books I choose to read, which is a topic for another video. Today I'm just gonna dive straight into the top five books that I've picked out for 2019. Now I usually don't discriminate between books that are on e-readers, Kindles, on my iPad, and on paper books. As much as I like to read paper books, it gets very expensive to read 50 or more books a year and buying them all paperback versions. Something like Scribed is a great way to be able to add it to your library and read books that maybe you're gonna really like. You might wanna pick up one day in a paperback form, but also cut down the costs on buying all of those books. So first up is Creative Calling by Chase Jarvis. I've talked about this book a lot, referenced it quite a bit in the past couple of months since I picked it up, because it's amazing, especially great for anybody that either has a creative calling already or is feeling that creative itch but doesn't really know how to get started. It's one of the most tactical and, and actual practical advice books that I read in 2019. There's a lot of great information, whether you're just getting started or you're trying to take your creative business or just your creativity as a hobby to the next level. I like how in Creative Calling, the main point that Chase is trying to make is that everybody's got this creativity inside them. It's as much a part of us as breathing, needing water is, and it's just about finding and honing it that everybody needs to do along their journey. And once again, because of all the practical advice in it, I find that it's something that can really build a creative habit for yourself in whatever fashion that may be. Next up is Great by Choice by Jim Collins. I've really enjoyed reading Jim Collins' books over the past couple of years. There's Good to Great, Built to Last. He talks a lot about the success of businesses and its leaders and always does a compare and contrast between those who were successful and those who were less successful in whatever category he's been researching. I think some other scientists and researchers have a problem with the way Jim Collins approaches things because they argue that he cherry picks his data or that it's not leading to a full picture and also kind of bringing into question how much luck is a factor. In Great by Choice, he actually talks and addresses that, that luck factor, which is really interesting. But I think a lot of the keys to success that you can find are really useful, especially if you're starting out in business or maybe you're already well along the path of business. If you're reading books by people like Jim Collins who are creating an optimistic standpoint on business and giving you those tips to success, I can't see how that cannot help you in improving your odds of success in the world of business, which many people already know has a very high failure rate. So to me, it just makes sense to read books that build up your encouragement to go forward in something that uh, otherwise you might not go and, and go out and do for yourself. Part of what gets books onto my list of favorites for a year is really the storytelling involved and how memorable and what kind of impression those books last on me. And that's where Jim Collins does a great job with the storytelling aspect and not just making dry businessy books. And so I think you'll get a lot of value out of reading any of his books, but Great by Choice is, is an awesome one to start with because the stories leave that lasting impression of what the main, main takeaways of the book are that you can then go and act on in your own life. And if you want a starting point for the way that Jim Collins thinks and a really excellent interview, one of my favorites with Tim Ferriss in the last couple of years was with Jim Collins. So I'll link that episode down below so you can go give it a listen and get an idea of what Jim Collins is all about. And the next book on my list is Quiet by Susan Cain. 
which tells the story of introverts in this ex more extroverted world. It's really the one that started the whole conversation back in 2011, I believe. And I've been putting it off because I thought I understood the, the main points. But once again, that storytelling aspect that Susan Cain puts into her book really makes it quite an awesome read. I think is really valuable, both from people who are trying to understand themselves a bit better as introverts, or from the extroverted perspective, a lot of people are getting value in reading quiet because they can now better understand who those people in their lives who are more introverted and where they're coming from, how to kind of build stronger relationships with people that need that quiet alone time versus people that recharge their batteries in social settings. And I really like some of the stories that Susan includes uh, the one in particular with her attending a Tony Robbins event that was all rah-rah and trying to get the crowd all hyped up and how she was having none of it and it was really not her scene really left a lasting impression on me and was quite uh, entertaining to include in the storytelling. But I think you'll really appreciate the science behind the differences between introversion and extroversion and how that can better help you understand some of this stuff as well. And then another book that I finally got around to reading this year that I put off for way too long is Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. This was an amazing memoir and I can't stop talking about it since I read it and I couldn't put it down when I read it back in the summer. It's just an awesome story about how Nike got to where it is today, going public, and all of the hardship that they went through basically for the first two decades that Phil Knight had this company under a different name at the time that was slowly growing and trying to build itself into the massive company that Nike is today. And the storytelling was outstanding in this book. It was so well written. I definitely recommend reading it, whether you care about Nike or building a business or anything. It just enthralls you and, and gets you sucked into the story of it. I actually looked it up because I couldn't believe that somebody who'd never written a book before did such a good job with this memoir. And it looks like Phil Knight had uh, a ghostwriter help him to weave the story together a bit better, which is totally fine and actually makes it that much more entertaining of a read probably than somebody that's trying to put their first book out to the world at such a massive scale like this one is. And then the final book is Stillness is the Key. And these books that I've talked about today are in no particular order. They're all at the top of an awesome list of books that I read this year. But Stillness is the Key by Ryan Holiday has been one that I've recommended a bunch of times already. And I didn't even know that it was going to be this format that Ryan was putting out for his next book but it really left a lasting impression on me and I think is well worth pretty much anybody reading. It's all about finding stillness in your life, in the world that's so busy and distracted as we are. In many ways, stillness is the third of a trilogy of Stoic philosophy books that Ryan's been working on with Ego is the Enemy and Obstacle is the Way. And I think that stillness has a lot more of the factors of actually having the practical tips that you can take and apply rather than just the stories that support why you need to be cautious of ego or finding that encouragement through the obstacles to get to your end point. The stillness practical tips are things that you can go and apply right away and also include those awesome stories that Ryan always talks about that back up his his main point and why he's writing each chapter so it's really a great read and i can't recommend checking out stillness enough i think that we live in a very busy and distracted world and that everybody can benefit from something in that book it's going to resonate with everybody so there you have it those are my top five books from 2019 
drop a comment below and let me know what your favorite book from 2019 is and what you're looking forward to reading in 2020. I really want to know what I should be looking forward to next on my list of books to read. And if you also want to keep up with more of the books that I am currently reading or have read in the past, you can join me on Goodreads. It's like a social media channel for book lovers. And I definitely recommend checking that out. That's where one of the places that I go to to figure out which books to read next. So I'll drop a link down below as well for joining the Goodreads community. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. It helps to spread the word and get it out to more people. And until the next video, dream on and find your flow.